So when we talk about patient presentation with a disc herniation, it's just like real estate, location, 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 laterality and level of the disc is super important. And you want to think about back pain, radiculopathy and paresthesias. And do they have a dermatomal distribution? You know, I think the thing I stress with our residents and, you know, with, with, with other medical students is these aren't perfect. So the dermatomes aren't, you know, set in stone. If you see somebody who has a four or five disc herniation and you think their radiculopathy is maybe more consistent with an L4 or an S1, that probably still explains the problem. Where I think the radic where I think the dermatomes really are are helpful is somebody tells you they have you know groin pain, L1, L2 kind of location, and you get an MRI and they have an L5S1 disc herniation. That's probably not related to to what they're experiencing. So you know you want to be in the ballpark, so to speak, but not necessarily have to be exact with with following this. But this is obviously very helpful, you know, L5 kind of gets that anterior shin, top of the foot into the bottom of the foot. S1 is kind of classically down the back of the leg into the lateral aspect of the foot. Um, uh, L4 kind of comes across the knee, L3 in the anterior thigh. So those are important uh, locations to remember. You also want to think about other things that you can get with disc herniation, things like neurogenic claudication, something we see class, more classically in the elderly population, uh, cauda equina syndrome, which of course is, you know, perineal numbness, loss of bowel and bladder function, and lower extremity weakness. And this is a, a three for three kind of syndrome. You got to have all three. Uh, having one of these three doesn't really get you in that cauda equina syndrome category. People talk about more chronic cauda equina syndromes, and that can happen with more chronic compression over time. The classic cauda equina syndrome is a massive disc herniation in a young person leading to acute symptoms. And then objective things to think about, positive straight leg raise test is, is a really good sensitive kind of finding. If you raise their leg up and they get that electrical shooting pain, that's a really good classic finding for a disc herniation. Femoral stretch test is another thing you can look at as far as you know looking for something to line up with your symptoms. Weakness and hyperreflexia are two things to really look for. Weakness is important because weakness leads us on the path of saying, we really need to think about treating this surgically versus conservative management, which we're gonna talk about as we go on. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from NeurosurgeryTraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.